Hi guys, today's video I'd like to talk about Substrate. I get asked a lot of questions about Substrate on Discord and by email etc. And they're always asking the same thing. What should I put in it? What should I use? Should I buy it from the shop? Should I make it myself? Well, the true answer is nobody knows. The universal mission that people use is called an ABG, which is Atlanta Botanical Gardens. There are four main ingredients in an ABG mix. Sphagnum moss, which helps it give a fluffy consistency and it retains moisture and also creates a little bit of aeration because the last thing you want is compaction in your mix if you're making a terrarium. Cocoa fibre, because it, again, retains moisture and orchid bark which breaks up the entire mix itself to give some aeration throughout. This mix is all well and good if you're creating a terrarium that's going to grow yourself photonia or quercifolia or something like that. A tropical plant that likes high humidity and moist soil without being wet and soaked. But what if you want to create something else what if there's another purpose in your terrarium? Maybe it's not a terrarium, maybe it's an enclosure for a reptile, an insect, a bug, whatever. It's going to be different. You're not always going to need an A, B, G mix. For instance, if you're creating a mosarium, the last thing you want is organic nutrients. Because they're not pretty good for mosses. For mosariums, I would suggest something like acadama or uh, pumice because they don't contain any nutrients and mosses don't need nutrients in the soil. So the mix for a moss area is completely different from the mix for something where you're going to have tropical plants. But the problem is, in terrariums, we like to mix them both. So you've got to be a little selective with the mosses and not just use any old thing you can find. You'll end up with a, a moldy, horrible mess like you would with an enclosed ecosystem where you've sealed it off and eventually it's all going to die and rot and things are going to change around in there. And that's not what we want from a terrarium. We want something pretty, we want something nice to look at. And something you can generally put on a shelf in your front room and go, that's cool, I did that. Let's take a look at some ingredients that you may need for your enclosure or terrarium. And let's do what I always do. Let's make it as cheap and efficiently as possible. Okay, right here we've got nine pots, but only eight ingredients. One of these is doubled up because I always put two of them in. This is the, this is the um, arrangement I have. Uh, we're using uh, peat moss, which is this one here, um, and this one, and cocoa fiber, which is ground down, as you're probably looking at the screen now, and it's showing you exactly how I ground this down to get this fine powder that we're going to include in there. Uh, sphagnum moss, which I actually buy. This is just from a reptile shop. It's really, really cheap. Uh, obviously, if you have it nearby, you can always go and grab a handful and use that instead. But if you do that, make sure you give it a good rinse and a bit of a quarantine and make sure you've got no hitchhikers because the last thing you need are extra bugs. And the other thing where you would use normally use orchid bark I would use this, which is leaf litter from my local forest floor, which I find much better than um, orchid bark. And not only that, this is going to be something else which I'll explain in a second. Now, that would be your main terrarium ingredients that I would use. Um, and with one more thing I like to put in, which is charcoal. This is not charcoal briquette. This is not the one that helps you like your barbecue. This is actually charcoal block, which is pure charcoal. Nothing added to it. If you're gonna buy it for your barbecue, make sure there's nothing added to it. It's absolutely pure charcoal because it will kill your animals. It will kill your plants if it's got the one with the added diesel, of course. Another 
ingredient I use. Again, this is for something else. This is reptile sand. And you can get this in different colors, which is wonderful. It really makes, changes the color of your, your entire mix, which can be useful, of course, depending on what you're making. Uh, and this has calcium included in it. I'm not sure if you can see little white bits of calcium in there. Don't think you can. But anyway, it's got calcium included in there as well, which is, is fantastic. And talking of calcium, this, as you can probably see on the screen now, is ground up eggshells. And that's all it is. So if you've had eggs, this is pretty handy. That's another calcium. And this one, which again, you can see on the screen now with a bit of luck, if I've managed to make the video right, is a ground up cuttlefish bone. And we're just using a pestle and mortar. You can use a hammer, of course, and a rag if you want, um, but a pestle and mortar seems to do the, the trick for me. Why would I want to add reptile sand? Why would I want to add calcium in two forms? Something you may be asking, well, it's very simple. Isopotum millipedes, edible substrate, and they need and require calcium at massive amounts. And they also require leaf litter, which Alkibag does not provide. So what I'm gonna do, as you see now, the leaf litter has been baked in the oven. And that's just simply from the forest floor. You can use this actually instead of peat moss. At a push, you can use substrate from the woods and by itself. Um, but I would suggest adding sphagnum to it. And then you can get uh, uh, quite a nice little mix there going. Because that's basically what an ABG mix is, is trying to emulate the forest floor. So if you can get the forest floor, you don't need that emulation. Let's make a substrate for millipedes and isopods. And I must say, before we go any further, if there's any children watching this, make sure you've asked your wife if you can use the inside of the house to make substrate, because you can make a mess and they do get rather upset. What I use for this is my uh, uh, moss bin. Uh, one of my moss bins, they are clearly done on them. Uh, I normally keep the moss in there and cultivate it and then uh, pop the lid back on for it and the lights and there we go. Well, that's another video. But for this time, I've got one spare, so I'm going to uh, I'm gonna chuck in all this gear here and we're going to make a nice substrate that should keep millipedes and isopods nice and happy. Chuck in some leaf litter. Uh, chuck in a bit of uh, charcoal in here. I'm not going to use all of it. I only chucked in a certain amount of it. Let's just move this camera up a little tiny bit. There we go. Um, I chucked some reptile sand in here. Again, I've only used half of what I had on here. And I'm going to chuck some spoonful of eggshells and a spoonful of this. The reason being, this is in the food anyway that I give them. So. We're going to end up with this, get your hands in there, get it all mixed up. We don't need spoons. Do this the proper way. And a lot of people put uh, wood in here, which is, uh, which is also fantastic. But they use some wood pellets, which I don't like using because you don't know what kind of wood you use. And some woods are not very good for uh, isopods. I avoid it. I like to know what's going to eat. When I collect my leaf litter, I generally collect it under trees that I know what the tree is. I know that I like it. So I put trees such as oak, birch maybe. Um, we don't have much choice over here. Because we have most of the trees over here are broadleaf. So uh, yeah, that makes it nice and easy for the choice. And there we go. We've got a nice mixture there. This is a lovely looking mixture. And that is edible for isopods and for millipedes. So they can eat the soil, basically. And that's fantastic. Now, what you can do is you can put some more uh, of this stuff in. This leaf litter. There's a handful of this if you want to add some more. Or, if you prefer, you can just feed them 
which I do. I just get rid of that leaf litter by feeding it and when they've eaten it, I add some more. But yeah. Now this mix is also okay for terrariums, but I suggest your leaf litter be able to dry it and crumple it up a lot better. But to be honest with you, this seems to work for me. I don't get them old. As I say, you do need to bake the leaves or boil them at least and then dry them out. But I prefer to bake them because then I get my leaves dried and I don't have to wait. And that's, uh, that's basically it for a millipede and isopod uh, edible substrate. And it's good enough for terrariums and whatever else you like. Now if you want, you can chuck some springtails in there just to make sure. Uh, and maybe some, if you're going to use it for ice pots and millipedes, you can also get some uh, dry, rotted white wood and you can break that up and throw that in there. Watch your fingers for splinters, of course. And uh, drops are cooking. And that's about it. Well, that's about it for this video. So, any news to you, give us a like and subscribe. Anything else you want to know, just back it in the comments down below and uh, I'll see if I can try and answer it or even make a video on it. I'll see you next time. Bye.